So I've just had this idea that I don't think nobody's actually thought about, right? Do you know when you go swimming? You go swimming and in the sea, you're swimming around, you always come out like a little bit more sunburnt than if you weren't in the sea. So do, do the water intensify the UV rays that are actually in the air or something like that? Do you know what I mean? Do you know, like if you're swimming, you're going to get sunburnt a lot more. You have to rejuvenate your sun cream a little bit more. Whether it's just the fact that the UK skin is a bit of a pansy or not, we don't know. So we're going to test it. And it's just a test that I'm quite easily going to do, really. We've got this enclosure just here. And we're about to put Mushu in it. So tune into the next video. Make sure you subscribe for that. And the way we're going to test it, we've got our 6.5 solar meter uh, just here. There we go. Boof. So we're going to put that in in a couple of locations, basically. Uh, there's two. We'll go two locations. One down here one over here maybe and then um, we'll get the reading and then we're going to spray the enclosure down quite heavily and then we're going to go back in and read do the readings again and just see if there's a difference i don't know if there will be or if there won't be but actually why am i going over there i don't need to so we're going to start ah. i need to actually find some locks for this before i actually put mushu in here but he's going in today so tune into the next video it's going to be so exciting i mean just look at that massive enclosure it's absolutely beautiful. All the bromeliads are settling in really well. The uh, pothos with the bromeliads over there, the creeping fig, the weeping dew over that back corner, the monster, everything is doing really well. Even the ground dwelling at plants. Ever since we put that UV light, the uh, LED lights up there, the plants are doing great. I mean, this one's popping up, that one's coming up. Even this one down here is really, oh. Uh, if you want to see how I made that, I'll leave the card directly up there, step by step. Check out. Attenborough up there with his little derpy face hiding away in the corner. He always finds a new place to actually physically like settle down for the day. Sometimes he's up there, sometimes he's over there, sometimes he's there. If he wants to get out of the race, he's all the way down there. Right, I'm procrastinating. Where did I put the solar meter? 6.5 solar meter. Where should we test? We're going to test. We're going to go down here. See this little gap in the leaf just here? And up there. And boof. 0.3. Then we're going to go further up here. Look, see this underneath dappled light. Let's see what makes this do. <laughs> see what I mean? Virtually nothing. But then if we go further up, let's have a look at this one just here. See, it shouldn't do too much because the UV light's right on the front of the enclosure. Can you see what I mean? Check that out. <laughs> so, wait there. Right. We'll do this a bit more professional. Down here, we got 0 0.3, didn't we? Oh, 0 0.4. Then we'll go on this little knot. See that little... I'll open the other side just so you can see it a bit better. Uh, there's a little knob in the wood just there. We'll set the solar meter straight on top of there. 0 0.9. So we've got 0 0.9 and 0 0.4. Let's give it a good spray down with the water, which is just there. Boof! And then um, we will basically just check it again. We'll check it directly after and then again 20 minutes later and just see... If there is a difference, let's fill up the bromeliads. Ooh, I love this enclosure so much. Mushu is going to absolutely love it. Now, one thing I've noticed, now it's been planted now and it's been all done and dusted for around about, I don't know, three weeks now. That one leaf there has grown from there up to there in like three weeks. So the light must be doing quite well. The, they did go through a really bad bacterial bloom. Everything got covered in like a really gross film. Which is exactly what I expected. I just sort of left it. Let the bioactivity of the enclosure actually take care of it all. And it worked. It did a really, really good job. Look at that down there. I'm going to give this a really good heavy mist. I, do, I don't like the fact that all the vines that I put in have gone a bit um, decrepit and a bit... I don't know if they're brittle or not. But we'll find out when Mushu is, goes in there. Because chances are, when he goes in, he's just going to terrorise the place. And he's going to... Oh, he's not a big lizard. If you don't know who Mushu is, Mushu is... Now, flash warning, we've got a magnetic ballast for the UV on this la on this enclosure. And as soon as you see the UV, it's going to start flashing. Uh, there he is. There's Mushu. He's a Calyx Versicolor. He's going into here. Now, there's quite a fascinating story. I love these pumped bottles. Do you guys have them? I just sort of unlock it and... And then it gets builds up the pressure and we can pump it in there. The story with Mushu is quite fascinating, really. He's a wild stowaway. I've told this story a million times. You're probably already bored of it, but I just love this story. He's a reptile rescue. He came to the UK in a shipment of wood um, from South Asia by mistake. He basically, when the workers were putting him 
in well when the workers were putting all the wood inside the actual container to ship over to the UK he jumped in without them knowing so you can imagine in the UK he spent 18 days in a container and uh, the workers in the UK opened up the container both out popped Mushu now the authorities turn around and say well we're just going to destroy him he's not an endangered species so uh, not today not on my watch let's give the leaves a go yeah not on oh god it dribbled out <laughs> Story of a man's life. Right, yeah, not on my watch. We're going to keep him as a pet as best as we possibly can so that they don't destroy him. Every animal's life matters. I think that's pretty much done for the water. Now, it already looks a bit brighter. Give a bit more down at the roots of the Monstera because it does like to be really wet. Do -do 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 -do. Right, there we go. So, solar meter. Straight away, we're going to test it now and we're going to test it again in six minutes. Down here was 0 0.3 what do we think boof oh four five four five so it's increased a tiny bit but that could have easily have just been because i moved it like half an inch without knowing so we'll move it back over to this side on the knobbly piece of wood because that's a direct one it just sits on the knobbly piece of wood oh one so it has increased slightly, only ever so slightly. Right, I'll come back in 20 minutes where it should have actually dried out a little bit and we'll just see if there's a difference. I mean, you never know, now it's all closed up, the added humidity, the water particles that are gonna be in the air may intensify the UV. You never know. There's a, oh, look at Charlie sat there. He's just had a meal and then gone straight back into his water bowl. But if you saw the live stream I'd done not so long ago, we actually found out he had mites. And um, yeah, so we sorted that out, but there's his enclosure. Absolutely amazing. We've got a subterranean hide hidden all the way down there. We've got a central hide, so we have to physically climb to get into that central hide. It's heated up with a infrared heat projector up there and a subterranean heat mat. It's got the UV lights, all the climbing branches. We've got some extra work to do to this enclosure. I can't wait, some extra branches and vines. He absolutely loves climbing. He comes straight out of that subterranean hide scoots straight across the front straight up there and he sits up there most of the night he'll obviously have a stretch around and stuff like that but he hardly ever touches the actual substrate maybe a few times a night he's sat in that water bowl today so it must be getting close to feeding time or shedding time do we think i don't know he's absolutely amazing if you want to see how that enclosure was built uh, i'll leave a card directly up there I can't wait to get Mushu out of this little enclosure and into that big one just there. He really deserves it. I don't know how much longer we've got him for. Now, in captivity, well, in the wild, they live for between five to eight years. We've had him three years now, and we don't know how old he was when he first came here. He was at adult size, so he's over a year old. So he's, he's around about four years old if he was only a year old when he came to the UK. Who knows? We've got some big plans for this. Not so much big plans, actually. We're going to have to get the water bowl out and the food bowl out, get them cleaned. They're going into the new enclosure. The actual plant that you can see over here, the whole pothos plant, it started off as a tiny little stub a few years ago, and it's grown right the way up and round and all the way over here. That's actually going to go in Attenborough's enclosure. That's this one over here, because when we first actually plant... Oh, he's amazing. Our green tree python. Bayak cross sarong. Green tree python. It's actually quite amazing because we actually planted this whole enclosure. We left it for a month and it really did. Oh, it was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. He spent two days and then he destroyed it. He basically, that planter that's down there, see that little plant that's poking out? He went in, moved around, pulled all the roots out and just sort of, it was just him moving. That's all it was. He didn't do it on purpose. He was just moving around. And it sort of, all the bits just fell out of there straight onto the floor. And as you can tell, they're all growing on the floor. But I left them down there solely for that purpose, so they would just grow on the floor. He keeps going up to the bromeliads and pushing, see how all the leaves are bent over, and especially on that one up there. And he just sort of bends them over, so they're not really a great idea. We did put this one in recently, but that big pothos plant is going to go in here, over there. Now, it's a bit more sturdier, it can take a bit more of a battering, so we're hoping it works perfectly fine in there. We'll see, won't we? There's a couple more bromeliads down that back corner that are doing okay, but I would assume that's solely because... I don't know, they're hidden away. He doesn't really get to them that much. But that's him anyway. It's quite amazing because it's just a full mesh screen enclosure. We've got all the light units up here. We've got the UV there, infrared heat projector. We've got a plant grow LED, a plant grow LED, all in that contraption at the top just there. We actually put this little tiny plant just there, just to underneath the plant grow light, just to see if it would work. And it's absolutely booming. It really is. Full 
background all the way around. We've blocked off the bottom there so we can have it fully bioactive. And it's just something that I thought nobody had ever done before. We've glassed the front, that's why we took the mesh out. We've done a bad job of taking the mesh out. We just sort of cut it and then siliconed a piece of glass in there. Um, but if you want to see how that was built, again, it was all unique. Nobody's really ever done a full, successful uh, Repti Breeze full mesh screen enclosure, fully bioactive like that. I'll leave the car directly up there. Let's go back to this. It's been 20 minutes now. You can see how the humidity is like raising up on the glass really nicely. Some of the plants are starting to dry out. I mean, the leaves on the bromeliad are dried out. It's really playing up nicely. Let's get the solar meter and have a look. Now, it was 1.3, then it risen up to 1.4, 1.5 there. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know I said that wrong. It was 0 0.3 to 0 0.5, not... 1.3 to 1.5 i know i know i know i'm a bit of i'm a bit simple i'm i'm a northerner i'm a bit simple let's try that one first so it was there so oh it's leveled off at 0 0.4 perfect as it was so that's gone to sort of what it was at the start slightly more not noticeably more let's try on this little knobbly piece of wood it started off at 0 0.9 then it jumped up to one uh uvi uh, we'll get that we'll drop that st straight on top of the knobbly piece of wood just like that and both so yeah there we go it's gone to exactly what it was at the start so the humidity doesn't affect the uvi rating oh yeah, so the humidity doesn't affect the UVI rating, but as soon as you spray it down, you're going to get a slight bump in UVI, but not too much to even worry about, and it's only going to be bumped up for around about 20 minutes in an enclosure this large. I hope that's answered some of your questions. I know it's answered my questions anyway. Cheers for tuning in. Subscribe. Peace out.